When the original Star Trek series premiered in 1966, it introduced TV watchers to a future filled with many shiny new wonders. Among those, the van-sized shuttlecraft named Galileo was particularly striking. This space runabout was a new idea and a great space to play tense, dramatic scenes. Fans will recall the tension of the Galileo 7 episodes and Commodore Decker flying down the hellish maw of the Doomsday Machine. But the prop that housed those steam box moments soon fell on hard times. And by the early 2000s, there was little left of this unique TV artifact. But one truly dedicated, resourceful fan and a hardworking group of professional artistic restorers saw the Galileo's potential to inspire another generation of explorers. This is the story of how they saved the prop from the scrap heap and brought it back to service the future from Space Center Houston. What kind of shape was it in when you first found it, when uh, it came up for auction? Well, we saw some pictures, but had no opportunity to see it. It was in Ohio, and the truth is it was not in good shape. In fact, it was in terrible shape. Uh, the wood was there, uh, but had largely corroded and had major issues. We couldn't just slap a coat of paint on and reuse it. The uh, interior metal had some cracking where water had gone in and froze. Uh, it was covered in dirt on the inside, and in generally speaking, it was a mess. This one was the one that I said, are you sure you really know what you're doing? Because this just seemed so, um, it was in such poor condition and it was so big and it was so, it was so complicated logistically and, and I was really wondering if we got ourselves in over our heads with this one. If you take a boat, all you do is rebuild parts enough. This one we had to actually take the pieces and duplicate them so everything was exact and put it back on the same way it was when it came in. We uh, thought hard about how to get it uh, fixed up. Uh, it might have been cabinet types or auto types and luckily we found boat people who are very used to large-scale projects, metal, wood, fiberglass paint, and there's a lot of elements of boat construction. Frankly it would have been great if we could have reused much of the pieces, the metal was all reused, the wood had to be replaced. Uh, this was designed as a piece for a TV show. It wasn't designed to be easily moved. It wasn't designed to be easily assembled and re reassembled. It wasn't designed to last 50 years. So there's an awful lot of structural work that had to be done to get the bones right so you could simply pick it up without damaging it, simply set it down without damaging it, which was not the case before. Originally, the design of the shuttle was a bit different than the prop that was actually built but its influence over future Star Trek shuttlecraft is undeniable. Matt Jeffries, the designer on Star Trek, had intended it to be more like an airplane with uh, sort of wings that stuck out and a more curved hull. But uh, AMT, the model makers who were going to build it, um, didn't have time to realize that in the amount of time they had available. So instead, they redesigned it as more of this rect rectangular butter dish shape. Um, which was easier to build. But it does have a very distinctive appearance, which influenced shuttles in Star Trek for 35, 40 years afterwards. Even the shuttles in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies uh, have the same basic outlines as Galileo. Working with Gene Winfield, the original builder, Gene is still healthy and alive and very much helping us on this project. So there are design documents which show this wonderful sleek craft that no one could build. Uh, and then there's what we have, and there seems to be nothing in between. We have people, plans that people have done off the internet, but nothing in between. So most of it is the uh, ha master shipwrights uh, and Hans's team carefully looking at what we had and duplicating it side by side and carefully looking at the screen caps and the pictures and the fan pictures and the detailed set pictures to get it as exact as possible. For example, they had that pointing down. So I know it's wrong. I have the slider spacing as well. I think it's a hair bigger, not here, but on the door. It's a challenge. Yeah. It's, a, uh, it's a challenge to make it look like it used to look like or it's supposed to look like and uh, copy the old pictures and whatnot. And, uh, it's kind of fun. 
So real work I began in earnest, say, beginning in January, and we expect to roll it out the door in May. Uh, we're down to largely the last finishing touches cosmetically, fiberglass and paint, and uh, as you may have seen, the lettering. The restoration team unveiled their rebooted Galileo on June 22, 2013 to a bevy of adoring trekkers. Its first mission? Fly to Space Center Houston near NASA's Johnson Space Center to be displayed on permanent exhibit for generations to come. This is for the fans, for the people who dream about space, for the people who say, gosh, I'd like to build one of those one day. This guy's is for you. So, Leslie? Can we display? All right, gentlemen, now's the time. Most things from Hollywood seem to be thrown away after they're used. It's an accident that this was saved. The studio sold it to a school for the blind. And I really find it hard to believe that you'd want to have the, actually have this for kids who were vision impaired, but it was on there alone for a while. And then it traveled around. I think most of our Star Trek moments is some giant, <laughs> hopeless mess shows up and I'm saying, you did what? <laughs> you bought what? You spent how much? And thinking that now we're now what? And um, you know these restorations aren't overnight. They take months and months. They take a great deal of time, energy, thought, research, and it really um, this it becomes a project. It's very intellectually challenging. It's uh, very uh, challenging on many levels. And uh, I think those are the most memorable moments that we're the most hopeless things come rolling in and somehow they're brought back to life. Well, in the beginning, I, I only saw pictures of what it was in the beginning. Um, kind of a piece of garbage, to be honest. But uh, seeing now what it's become and how much work has been put into it, I'm really proud of him and I'm really impressed with the work of Hans and of Master Shipwrights. They're doing an amazing job. I think we as Star Trek fans uh, are very grateful to Adam for having restored this piece because not only did he purchase it at auction for at least $70,000, the cost of renovating it must be incalculable. And he is not going to recoup that by selling the shuttle, he's going to donate it to the Houston Space Center where it can be seen and enjoyed by millions of people. So I'm of the age that when Star Trek came on the air I saw it the first time, maybe 10 years old, 10 to 12. And from my point of view, that was what we were going to go do when we went out in space. The question everybody always asks when Star Trek, the classic series, is trotted out is why do people like it? Why is it such a mystery? You know, why, do, why do people still care about this old show? And uh, I think it's because it took science fiction seriously, it built a plausible future world, and it had a hopeful vision of human nature or how human nature might improve in the future. So in my mind, this is what our future was going to go be, and as such, it was very, very inspiring uh, to the math nerds in us, to the engineers in us, to the space scientists in us, and inspired, I think, a whole generation of people. Because it was fictional, but it was us. And it was a reasonable extrapolation of what might actually happen. Um, and that's why. And that's why it matters to people in a way that's very, very interesting. Um, I uh, don't think I'll ever have superpowers. But I bet someday we have spaceships that go up and down and go to space and do things, and this is the first representation of a lander that's like. The longer and prosper to Galileo <laughs> is all I can ask for the fans. The Galileo exhibit opens to the public on July 31st, 2013, and holds with it the inspirational promise to go where no human has gone before. For Space.com, I'm Miriam Kramer. Dot com.